Yeah, so much to talk about as, I guess, foreign actors uh, and security around the world. It's one of the main topics here in Davos. First of all, you have repeatedly asked for access to a nuclear plant which has been Russian-occupied in Ukraine, Zoporizhia. Uh, why have your inspectors not been able to go there? Well, in general, the situation in Ukraine is quite unprecedented. Uh, we have uh, war unfolding in a country that has a vast nuclear infrastructure, 15 yes. nuclear reactors, four sites, lots of things. We've been able to do some, some stuff there. I was in Chernobyl um, a few weeks ago. Um, but then there remains the issue of this uh, nuclear power plant that you are mentioning, uh, Saporizhia, which is uh, pretty close to the, to the war zone, if I can call it li like that. And the problem uh, for our inspectors to access, of course, is derived from this. Um, so it is a occup occupied uh, site uh, which belongs to Ukraine, but is under Russian control. So that brings a number of uh, problems which are not technical in nature yeah. but rather political. No. But do you think you'll be able to have access? I mean, uh, this well, is Europe's biggest power plant as well. It's the biggest in Europe, actually, yes. not only in the Ukraine, in Europe, six reactors. Oh. And we are in consultation at the moment with the Ukrainian government and also I'm in contact with the Russian oh. authorities, of course, because it's indispensable. Oh. They, are, they are in charge. So we are trying to secure this access as soon as possible. I mean, I, I understand that the Russians are actually now saying they will permanently keep this under their control and I think are demanding that Ukrainians pay for the electricity. Well, there have been some statements um, in, in, in this sense, but nothing that has been confirmed um, officially. For the moment, what I can say is that we have this peculiar situation. Okay. The plant is in Russian hands, but it's operated by Ukrainian uh, people and it's feeding the Ukrainian grid, right. not the Russian one. What, what can you do under these conditions, though, going well, forward? We have to go there. The reason we have to go there is because there we have more more than 30,000 kilograms of plutonium, 40,000 kilograms of enriched uranium, and yeah. we are the ones who have to um, check that this material is there and it's not been uh, deviated to, to some other users. And, uh, you know, insofar as my inspectors do not have the access, then yeah. there is a, a loophole there that might be created. So talk to me about Iran. So I think next month is when we're expecting the publication of this two-year-long investigation into yes. Iranian particles found in some uh, Iranian sites. What can you tell us? Well, uh, we've been uh, working with Iran. We've been talking to them. Uh, I can say that the, the this investigation and the consultations are ongoing and the report as you say or my conclusions uh, will be coming out uh, shortly uh, all i would say now for prudence sake is that it's been a very complex uh, process and we're not there yet w which means what more more limbo that we don't know how the nuclear I hope accord not. i hope not you don't sound very optimistic I, well, I have to be professionally optimistic. I'm a diplomat, and I always try. And this is what I'm doing. Are, are you confident that Iran is not trying to get up their nuclear capabilities at this point? Or well, you... they, they are um, increasing and strengthening their nuclear capabilities. If by nuclear we understand everything they are doing in enriching uranium and, and having a bigger infrastructure, what we need is to ascertain what uh, happened with some things that we discussed there and that should not have been there. Yes. Traces of uranium in places that were not declared as uranium sites or places that yes. uh, would, of course, justify the presence of these materials. So we are asking, what is this? What was happening here? Right. To, Where is the material? To, right, to see whether they're, they're building a nuclear bomb. Well, yes. to see what that material is and what it is being used for. Then other conclusions may follow. Um, what's your take on Korea right now? Well, Korea is one of those flashing spots where also things are going wrong. Uh, they are accumulating even more material, their nuclear arsenal, because they have actually crossed the line yeah. and they have nuclear weapons, but they are, uh, their activities are, are increasing and there, are, there is information, we have information that they are preparing for what could be another, yet another uh, nuclear test, testing another bomb. What is the right way to deal with Korea right now? I think what one needs is engagement, is political engagement. Without a political engagement, a structured process, not a meeting, yeah. a structured process, which, as 
in the past would allow for the inspectors, the IEA, to return, we're not going to move. But whose job is that? Is there, you know, does the war in Ukraine take so much away from other parts of the world that peace and security worldwide are at risk? Well, there must always be space and time for peace and negotiations. I cannot accept that because we have another crisis in another part of the world, we do not uh, pay the necessary attention to something which is, you know, I was in Japan last week, and I can tell you there, perhaps here in Davos, we do not feel yeah. that. But when you are in Asia, uh, you, you feel how uh, dangerous, how volatile the situation is with a country that's testing missiles, that is developing more nuclear weapons.